Hello, everyone. Oh, that's very loud. So, warm welcome. Warm welcome to this side. Warm welcome to all of you. Welcome here at the uh, Berlinale Talents talent stage, as we say. So it's the hard stage, in a way, of the Berlinale Talents program. Uh, it's very nice to have you here um, under the umbrella of our this year's topic, which is secrets. Um, it's about sharing secrets mainly, not so much about revealing them. Probably we also have something to reveal, but first and foremost, we invite you to share the secrets and be shared with some insights of, of these lovely guests. And uh, without any further ado, I won't steal any time, uh, but I would love to introduce you briefly to the moderator of the session, which is Ben Gibson, good friend of us. Thank you very much that you're here again. Thank you very much, and welcome. Yes, I think we'll, get, we'll, we'll uncover a few secrets, so uh, I think we'll live up to the title. That's always, always a special challenge. Um, we're very lucky, and it's, I think, a very, uh, uh, a very big privilege to have with us, on my right, Christian Petzold, who is, I think, one of the most articulate storytellers of contemporary cinema in Germany or anywhere else. Um, and we don't normally actually say about German filmmakers that they're articulate storytellers. We'll get to that. Um, uh, and um, reaching some other new peaks of narration and storytelling with this new film, which is in competition, Transit. Some of you have seen this film. It would be really useful to know right up, the, up front how many. Quite a lot. Okay, good. We're going to show clips. You'll get a sense of the tone of it. Like, like the Social Democratic Party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on my left, Barbara Auer, who, who um, um, is an amazingly resourceful, important uh, actress uh, working in German film and television since the middle of the 80s. Um, they've worked together, I think, four or five times um, in the Petzold crew. Um, um, and we're going to talk about the process because there will be times, I imagine, when Christian won't tell us exactly what's happening and then Barbara is going to explain what it's like to be in this space uh, uh, from another perspective, which is very much like a Christian Petzold film. We'll go find another narrator and see if they agree. Um, so, first of all, um, uh, I, want to, I want to begin by showing you a little bit. Um, uh, Transit is a film um, which is from a novel set in 1942, <clears throat> but it happens kind of last week or last year or in the 1970s or on my last summer holiday or in another space altogether. Um, and um, Franz Rogowski is playing this character who's um, basically about to become uh, um, a fake version of a famous uh, uh, author. Um, and uh, he's just realizing that he's got to run away and make another life. So can we have the first clip? Thanks. <clears throat> I'm going to go back and we're going to talk a lot about transit, but I want to just start very quickly with uh, a bit of life story. So um, um, you, are, you were brought up in Han, and according to some kind of legend, after you were born in 1960, uh, you did some part of your replacement military service showing teenagers movies in an old YMCA center, which is... Interesting. That's true, is it? Yeah, there are many lies in my biography, but uh, this is the truth, I must say. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, you did, at the Frey University, you did, you did German and drama. Um, and then you went to that great film school, the Deutsche Film und Fernsehen Academy Berlin. Okay. Um, um, the first thing I saw, I just said to Christian, I had a wonderful time sort of re-seeing uh, uh, Christian Petzold uh, in the last four or five days and one of the I mean and it's actually very unusual I, I think since you know directors like Fassbinder that somebody keeps working as hard as you're doing which is about having a crew having an idea working at low budgets so there's lots and lots of work um, there's a short um, uh, for uh, Das kleine Fernsehspiel um, with this wonderful um, they're, they're from some kind of a makeup distribution company and they have conversations about the death of Frank Sinatra um, um, which is full of all the tropes in your work and really, really great. Pilot, is it Pilotinen? And then there's, I want to show a clip before we start talking from Cuba Libre which is your first, um, your first feature. I know uh, 
Pilotin was my first feature. Okay. Yeah, and this was my first uh, uh, film after the German Film Academy. Okay. Where you know. Uh, All right. So it's your debut of... film. Okay. Thank you. So, um, and uh, there'll be a few spoilers here because I'm really interested in the endings. Uh, um, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go back and watch the whole movie um, because we just want. I just want to show you. Um, the uh, a, a few moments um, at the end of um, of this film, uh, Cuba Libre, probably without comment, and then I'm going to ask Christian to talk about it. Thank you. Can we have the second one? So now, now you know the ending of Cuba Libre, but it doesn't stop it being a wonderful, a wonderful uh, film to watch. I, I'm, I'm showing you that partly because uh, I, I'm, it makes me think. About, so, in, in a way, what's extraordinary about a lot of your work is that you don't say, oh, either I could have genre tropes, or I could be a cinephile, or I could deal with uh, um, uh, all the things that happen in the cinema, or I could have uh, subjective character depth. You don't make that choice. It's a, it's a choice that lots of people in film school and think that they have to make. Um, and there's a real powerful emotion in that thing. Obviously, it reminds me of a Buddha Souffle and all those things, and I want to ask you about how many Sam Fuller movies you've seen and all of that. But the que the, so the clip is there to say, what, what's your heritage as a cinephile, and how does it come into your work? Um, I haven't seen this since 20 years, huh? and I'm astonished a little bit now. Um, and um, it w uh, for me, I haven't seen this movie for, since 20 years because I don't like it really. And I'm not a, I'm not a self-criticism guy. Yeah? I, I, I like myself and the movies too, but uh, <laughs> but this uh, but in this movie, I have made all these thi all these things uh, Ben uh, told us about. It's too much quotations yeah, in this yeah. movie, and it's a typical student movie of a 28-year-old boy have uh, uh, been in the cinema for uh, more than 10 hours a day and uh, want to be part of a world which is gone, yeah? a world of uh, crime, pistols, girls. Yeah? And uh, the, the film before, this was more a film with something to do with my work later, but I have to do this movie, I think, because I have all these scenes in my head. And uh, I, I remember something because I'm looking for the female uh, main actress, yeah? and we have we haven't got any time. We are shooting a 35 millimeters, but we have just 300,000 marks, not more, for this movie. And then I have to go by car for looking to the actors. Now I have no casting company or so yeah, who can uh, give money to. And I um, sent the uh, the script to Barbara Auer she, in this time, 1995 or yeah, this year, and. Um, she was in a holiday and can't, um, this was not the time of smartphones. Not the time of the mobile phones. Well, that's what she, that's what I, she said in the letter. I didn't and the have holiday. a mobile. <laughs> and, yeah. and so I just react after my holidays. And it was too late. He said, yesterday I decided to, to take another cast. Yeah. But I will phone you again. <laughs> and he did it five years later with the state um, I am in. That's right. That's good. I'm glad you stumbled across the story with yeah. this clip. The guys in the black Alfa Romeo are the producers. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when one of the producers, he hates uh, to see the movie until today because he thinks he's just a quotated uh, killer. Yeah? So, and uh, because he, the, 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 the gun in his hand, he, he never shot a gun in his life. And he, uh, thing, he uh, thought that is ridiculous. And, I look. At, I don't think that he is ridiculous, but uh, he don't want to see this scene uh, again in his life. Yeah. I mean, what I'm interested in is the precision of the point of view. You're very interested in point of view. I mean, whatever you think about the whole of the movie, the sequence um, is uh, is amazingly, uh, really, uh, strongly classical in the sense that. Um, we don't see him, and then we see her run across the street, and then she walks out of the frame. Everything is lost and falling out of our hands, literally, as, you know, as out of the images. And then there's that look from the window. I mean, I could go on for a long time about what, it, what it's saying about style, but, but um, so when you were screening these movies to these kids, presumably mm -hmm. there were a lot of American B-movies, there was a lot of uh, film noir, um, and then there was starting to be some new wave. Yes. Um, 
that sounds that's right I, I, I like in this scene because I can't remember it really but I can I like it that he's running out of this cadrage eh? yeah. yeah and there's a this elliptic eh? a, 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 a lip, Ellipse, ellipse, ellipse. ellipse eh? Be, oh, oh, uh, my English is very bad. Uh, she's uh, my two, and we are not so comfortable in English. But if there's the most of the you are Germans, we can switch uh, our language. Uh, 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 we have a two channel of uh, um, things here, and um, and I like this ellipse eh? when when she's uh, when, she, uh, when he's running out because the whole story is, uh, is a story about people who are. Who, uh, who missed each other their whole life. Yeah? And uh, in, in this moment of uh, when their eyes are meeting, he's coming back with the money, she's in the hotel. In this moment when they, are, when, they looks, uh, when, they are, uh, when they looked at each other and there's a possibility to, to be together, in this moment he's running out of the Kadarash and is dying. As, as if you out of the Kadarash, you have to die. Yeah? So yeah. this I like. Uh, this I remember. I think I have talked the same thing to the actors 23 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm going to jump immediately to the inner Sicherheit, um, and, and, and you're going to see Barbara in a scene from that film. Um, it, and, and of course, we're going into what feels like a less generic territory because, um, in a way, for me, from outside, I remember seeing this film and thinking, okay, this is a link to the German sisters, to the second awakening of Christa Klagers, to the work of Margaret von Trotter. This is, this is a, a kind of criminal drama of the suburbs, but now those angry 20-year-olds became parents and that's not going very well either. Um, and um, um, many people here will have seen this film. It was a very turning point film in, in, in the rearrival of subjects in a way in German film. So um, this is just a scene um, uh, uh, where you're being parents and there's been some shoplifting going on. Um, can we play that please? Yeah. My, my time code is not the same as theirs. The police is coming now. Yeah, police are coming now. Um, so um, I want to ask you Barbara, when you're working with, in a Christian film there is this idea, in a way, I always feel that the actors are almost directing each other as performers in their own lives, because everybody has been given a certain role, a certain amount of identity, a story, and then they're kind of playing it out the best way they can. Um, does it sometimes feel like, okay, I would like more, I would like more depth, I would like more conventional ways of talking about character history, and how does he talk about it? What, what kind of stuff does he give you? For that especially, or for, for that uh, or, to start with, no, yeah. when when we start, when I work, or everybody who works the first time with Christian, is surprised and a bit irritated, because it's always um, uh, such an atmosphere of, uh, it's a friendly, very um, relaxed atmosphere. You give us the feeling we have all the time of the world, and we have all the space to develop. And of course, everybody knows you don't have um, so much time in shooting, but it, it is. We have a preparation of two days. We had it in that times, but now you have it perfect in a way uh, over the last years, I think. We meet for, um, for two or three days and there are readings, of course, and he shows us uh, films, a lot of uh, film, yeah. And we are talking about film or you are talking about about um, a photograph, talking about life, we are eating, to, we eat together, we spend time together. It's a mixture between um, to, to change, uh, yeah, to, to talk about life and to talk about characters and the story. He's a big storyteller. Always, even while shooting, because uh, every morning you, we have something about, yeah, two hours um, rehearsal. And in that time, you mostly um, tell stories. <laughs> yes, it is. But so, um, you create a space of um, conspiracy, in a way. It's a very intimate uh, space, and everybody has the feeling to be part of a big thing, even if your character is very small, for example. You have uh, really the feeling, yes, I'm, I'm important for this film. And that's great. That I enjoy very much. Yeah. yeah. 
because actually you, you always have a beginning, a middle and an end, even if you're the lady with the two dogs that didn't turn out yeah. to change the story, or, although he, you're absolutely at the center of, of this. Um, how did you talk about the idea of, of, the, of the kind of the RAF becoming parents and what they would do? Did you, I mean, were you, did you talk about uh, um, the script as it was being written, were the, were the stuff being, dialogue scenes being rebuilt while you were in rehearsal? How did that work? You mean at that yeah, time? So yeah. with, how were we talking about, we, we are parents and you had children there and me too. You, you said the most, the biggest mistake for these people is to have a child. If you live in, um, yeah, hidden, of course. And um, I don't know, remember, what, what, what were we talking about first uh, when we met? I think I talk about the Volvo. Yeah? The Volvo, yes. I, I talk about this because um, my, my, I think my daughter was four years old and we are yeah. in the kindergarten. And, and, uh, you my son was already 14. Yeah, yeah. yeah we talk that about biggest, what, yeah. what changed since 1977 in the German left yeah? and the German left wing uh, people that they have now big Volvos, they had <laughs> kindergartens of their own, they're eating organic food, yeah? and they are, they are, um, I think they've changed the, 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 their positions from, from uh, to work for the society into a family position. Yeah? They're living in a nuclear cell, nuclear family cell, yeah? and they want to be their good people, yeah? but they don't work in this uh, anymore for to change a society, they want to change themselves and their group. Yes, as is, so was my experience in uh, Kreuzberg yeah, in Berlin. And uh, so our people are driving cars like Volvo or Saab because they are steel cars. Yeah, so we are sure uh, uh, nothing can happen to you. And so we talk about this little scene. And I think all the mothers. Yeah, this was a tradition from this, uh, from the RAF. The mothers are strong. In yes. this, in this nuclear cells. Yeah? When I see this scene, I remember that we all, we also have this three hours or two hours rehearsal for this long scene, yeah. but the camera position doesn't change. Yeah? We have, we have a long, long rehearsal that we can find the camera position to find a triptych, not the triptych, a tri uh, three yeah. uh, uh, triangle, whatever, the triangle of this family where the mother is sitting. Yeah. yeah? The father in the center. In She's the center. In the center. center. And, like. Yeah. Like, the, like, a commission, uh, uh, like a detective, police detective, she can yeah. sit mm. down, she, has the, the, uh, she, is the, the, she rules the scene. Yeah? And the, the father, he is, uh, he is on, on, on the left and the daughter on the right. And so cut, and th then you can see the daughter alone and talking to, uh, to the father and they have a uh, um, combination of their own without the mother. And this was the idea, to have three the ca or four camera positions in five minutes, but we have worked there longer than if we have travelings and uh, 25 positions yeah, in this scene. And I remember, yeah, the mother was the stronger character and the hard liner in a way. And it was also in our, um, while the shooting, you remember it, it was a kind of escalation between me and, um, and Julia in the end. Mm. Because, of course, it's... Uh, yeah, it's fluently in a way. Yeah, the it's clip didn't quite play right, but I was just trying to make sure that we got both scenes so that that coercive moment where you, you kind of say, oh, darling, you do understand that we love you afterwards, which is a completely different kind of frame favoring her, was the worst of the exploitation. I think it's incredibly powerful the, the way those two scenes are cut together in terms of understanding somebody telling you what your role is mm -hmm. and what, what childhood is, you know. Yeah. But Barbara uh, said, some minutes ago, that uh, um, the, the 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 wrong the wrong thing they made is a child because yeah. when you are in the underground, you are, you don't have you can't have any things with you, no books, no childs, no theory. You have to work yeah. there yeah, very hard, and they have a child, and you can see when the child is gone and they are alone in this kitchen. Yeah? In this moment, the, 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 you can feel that they have why they have this child. They have this child to be connected back to the world of feelings, yeah? Yeah. for em empathy, yeah? because they lost it. Yeah? When you can, in, in this time, Harun, Vahoki and me, we have written the script. We have uh, 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 read so many books from the 70s, people who are biographies of people from the left wing. Uh, 
I just don't see this part of the audience. <laughs> and um, you focus on that no, the, well. my, my neck is. <laughs> and um, and uh, all these people said we, we, we lost it. We, we have we have uh, 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 Koenen with the red uh, the red century, uh, and and uh, so these two yeah uh, these two parents they made a child to get back into a, in, in in life but they destroyed the ch child in the same moment because the child is uh, uh, it's it's uh, was heißt werkzeug noch mal ich habe vergessen skill uh, what was it? Hmm? Hmm? tool yeah the, the child is a tool to to reach back uh, to the world yeah it's an incredible film it also has two perfect punning titles, which are completely different puns, which I don't know any other film that has this. I remember seeing it and seeing The Inner Sicherheit is a wonderful title in German because it's internal security and it's a feeling that you want. And so it's good and bad. But the state I'm in uh, is also about the state and, 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 and it's, it, it, both titles are wonderful titles, which I can't think of another film where the translation is a great pun. Anyway, that's there was a song detail. by Bell and Sebastian in this time, yeah? uh, uh, the state I'm in, the song uh, from yeah. 19, 1908 or so, and we heard it in this. Uh, also, um, we have sometimes we have songs during the shooting time. Yeah? Songs uh, uh, we we hear, and sometimes the songs are in the movie, and sometimes the songs is something for the mood. Yeah? And uh, the state I'm in was a song she uh, Julia heard at, uh, uh, at the Atlantic yeah? when she's yeah. with the with the headset there and we heard it each time two or three yeah. times because the state i'm in has also what you said this double meaning it means yeah. uh, uh, the germany i'm living in and also and myself, my, myself. Yeah. 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 That's right. yeah i want to show two clips in a row the reason is i want to just talk about the way you um uh, create space and i'm going to ask you about this crew that you go on working with um, and the particularity with which you're all saying that's a Volvo, that's an open top Ford, this is that light, this is this thing, and you're beginning, you're building up work. And I want you to actually talk about how you do this. Um, and these are two clips which are both interesting to me from the point of view of the way you, you use space. Um, but they're quite short. One is from Transit and the other one um, is from Barbara. Can we run that, please? Yeah, so I picked these to, because, you know, it, when it says something in a script, then that's one thing. And then when it's directed, it's another. I mean, uh, um, Nina Haas has to go somewhere, meet the girl in the bathroom and get some money. And that's the scene. Um, um, how, how, how do you evolve and develop working with a production designer and a cinematographer and so on, a way of reflecting so much character in the choice of space? Yeah, Barbara, it's, it's a period picture in 1980 in Germany, East Germany, German Democratic Republic. On this day, we have shot the scene. This, the name of the scene he's, uh, was the, the name of the scene was uh, a German Democratic Concon, yeah, because of the legs. Yeah? And uh, I have seen this. My, my uh, grandma, she has also a restaurant in the German Democratic Republic. And um, there were some people, some young girls are working there, and they put their legs on, uh, always between the, the shifts, yeah? always on, on, the, on the wall because of the, the veins. Yeah? And uh, some, the other thing what they do is when the butter, butter was too hard, they, they chew it before. <laughs> before <laughs> this, putting it on the table. Yeah, before on the, on the bread. Yeah? So, yeah? And at this I remember and I talked to, to the production designer and talked that in the, what I'm looking for are places where I can feel the time before the national social socialism and the communism, in the time when there are dance floors, yeah? when there was the twenties, when we have a, civiliz a civilization and the citizens, and we have a, a, a happy weekend and some, something like that, and it was yeah, totally destroyed in the both systems, and uh, so I want to have little jazz music. Yeah, and I want to have a, um, a dance floor, and I want to have this concon legs, yeah? and uh, on the other hand, I want to have this reality of 1980. So we are looking, we, are, uh, we have a journey through the uh, old parts of uh, uh, formerly known German Democratic Republic, and find some places, and um, we ha don't have to do so much there, because the, mm, there's, there's not so much destroyed than in the west part of Germany. Yeah? In the west part, we destroyed everything, because we want to 
uh, rebuild us and don't want to feel guilty eh? and therefore we destroy everything the wall uh, the nazi houses and so on and um, in, in, in the german democratic republic you can find this this things and you can find it uh, in, in two or three kilometers we in this time we can make our uh, to, to reach the set by, by bicycle, everyone. Yeah, this was no. We don't need this big trucks and and uh, the, the the actors are in hotels and at seven o'clock they have to be in in, in, in truck number no not uh, car number two and uh, a bad smelling driver brings them to the set or so. This was not. Uh, uh, the, the, we have all, also the actors are on bicycles there. Yeah? And so there was this, we have this atmosphere of light, yeah? we want uh, of sun, we have colors, yeah? we have naked legs, but on the other hand, we have an unfriendly atmosphere, a guy yeah, who uh, don't want, be, uh, don't, don't like guests. Yeah? And so, and, and we have the crimes thing with the money in the same moment. And so uh, I talk, we, are, we are talking, the head of departments always talk together, costume, yeah, production designer, and we talked about photos and moods and about the story and, and then they go by themselves and create it yeah? how many weeks of pre-production would you do with a production designer a dop everybody there um, I, this i start i think half a year before shooting the first thing we are doing is uh, we have we for example we start shooting two and a half weeks in munich or three weeks in munich the the third part of the Polizei roof. Also, we, 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 we too are expected this work uh, uh, very, very well. Yeah? And um, so, but for half a year, I was there in Munich, and we we have a journey to all the places we can shoot. Yeah? They have to be in, in a closed area so that we don't have this logistic problems with these trucks and uh, to change each day uh, the whole company. And. Um, and then we, we are walking and thinking, and we are all together, costume, production designer, cameraman, a DOP, huh? and we are talking how, how it could look, what, what, we, uh, what, what kind of park is this, this tree is very interesting. Yeah? And so we make photos from different positions, and we are talking the whole afternoon, and we go on, on the next day. And so we, we find a, a room, a fictional room, yeah? a space, a fi fictional uh, space for the... Uh, for the movie. Then I go back and rewrite many scenes huh? because the, the script is just a plan. I now have found a neighborhood and I have to change myself. Huh? I have to, yeah? and, and then I, um, when we start, for example, our rehearsals on the 15th of March, yeah? <laughs> um, we have two days in Munich and all these uh, um, um, sets are now then they are they are ready. Yeah, we have the the wall power, uh, wall flower, uh, wall papers, wall flowers, wall papers. It's hard in English. <laughs> yeah, uh, to um, you need I think you need two thousand words to speak English very well. I have two one thousand two hundred. This eight hundred sometimes I miss. That's very good. For James Joyce, you need six thousand, uh, six thousand two hundred. I, I read sometimes. Yeah. But we have a stain on us. We we all, we know exactly what's happening. Okay, happened. but then in this in this two days we will be there. We have we have also we make a walk. All the actors together with me and uh, the assistant of me because she write down things. Uh, we are going to all the shooting places. Also, the shooting places some of the actors never will uh, be, yeah? because this is a journey into this, uh, into the fiction, yeah? into, in, in also into the, into the mood, into also, yeah, in, into the mood of this uh, movie. And then we look, uh, we will see two movies. Uh, some came running by Vincent Minelli, I can say to you, and Viaggio in Italia by uh, Roberto Rossellini, and. Then we uh, have a code reading there, yeah? yeah. So, and we have photos uh, and costumes have, we have. And then the, um, all the actors have one, two or three days for themselves later. Yeah? Because then when they read the script again, yeah? they read, read it in another way. They have a, they, they have a room in, in their mind. They have an imagination yeah, of something which, which is there. Yeah? Uh, Does yes. everyone here know, by the way, what a cold reading is? So what Christian is saying, he just doesn't want them to try and invest a lot in the, in the film, uh, in, the, in, the, in the words that they're going to say and, and fix them. He wants them to just read it together in a simple way, right? That's right. 
For, for example, when, you, when, when I'm hearing um, actors who are who are reading books for when, on CD yeah? for, for the for the car driving or so, I hate these actors who are reading with uh, uh, emphasis. Emphasis. Yeah? Emphasis. Yeah, emphasis. My children, when I'm talking to them, the Grimm's uh, tales of the Grimm's, yeah? they hate it when I give too much pressure. Uh -huh. So yeah? they want to have me. Uh, you want to have a code reader, yeah? and I need a, also a code reading because I don't want to play in this part. I just want to have all the group together. Yesterday I met a guy from Amazon, Ted Hope, a very intelligent cineast uh, producer, and uh, he produces, for example, Ang Lee's The Ice Storm. Yeah? He was he produced it, and he talked that Ang Lee, for each actor, he has made a book one song and a scene from a movie in a little like like a gift yeah so so everybody uh, because Ang Lee doesn't know anything about the americans yeah? he's from taiwan he was 29 years old yeah but he himself make a research what is what is the usa in the 70s yeah for like in the ice storm and so he gives gift to the others and so everybody has something yeah? for me it, the um, when i compare myself with Ang Lee, i'll try to um that uh, for me it's better to have the whole comrade, uh, the whole group, the whole collective uh, around me, so nobody gives, uh, 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 receive, receives a gift by its own. It's mm. also it's a collective work, yeah? but it's not so far away, I think, from this Angli thing. Mm. Okay. And uh, uh, in, in, in English, it sounds totally banal. Yeah, can that sound? No, no, it's not banal. But when, but Barbara, when you go in, into into a, a Petzl crew, and then there are these people who are like, well, I suppose they're like the crew for Powell and Pressburg or, or Fassbinder. They know absolutely what one another are going to say because they're building up their expertise as a group of, of 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 collaborators. Is that very very different from being on other sets? I mean, because I know that you've you've worked with you know a lot of quite. Uh, prominent directors with, with Margaret von Trotter, with Nina Grosser, Hark Bohm. What's his set like? Ah, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's different. It starts already with the script. Christian's scripts are different from others because he's um, he mostly it's like a bit, it's a bit like a novel sometimes not in the dialogue of course but in between and sometimes he describes a scene or a situation in a very special and a very poetic way for example he says um, he he's, he, he he doesn't write only, oh, you come in and they're sitting anybody on a t at a table and uh, this person go to the other person and they talk. No, he says, ah, there's um, an inn and there's uh, like a bit um, on, a, on a painting of Edward Hopper, for example. So, you know, immediately you feel an atmosphere. And then, for example, in, in, our, in one of our Polizeiruf uh, circles, Kreise, there was such a scene in an inn, and you said, okay, it's a situation like on a Hopper painting, this loneliness and all that, and you were sitting there, you both, Matthias, the main part, me, two detectives, and there's a waitress, and this waitress is just coming, and she asks uh, what, what you like to drink, and so, and we say you that, and then she goes back, um, and she's smoking, and then you wrote something about a photograph. He wrote, ah, yeah, and she, uh, the, uh, she's standing there smoking, and she has a view, she, she's looking up, like on a photograph of Robert Frank. I don't know him, but it's a, it's a photograph. And there's an elevator guide on this photograph. He, he's writing down it in the script, uh, an elevator guide. And this woman, elevator in New York, or uh, I don't know, um, she has a little, um, yeah, she, she has this, uh, she's looking up and this luxury moment of doing nothing. And immediately you write, <laughs> you wrote, um, it's this moment of every working people in the whole world, every day, or perhaps once a moment to have 
to just look up just for yourself and something like this. Yeah. It's just for this little part of the waitress. She, she has but it's just fascinating. This is fascinating to me because when you look at his films, you realize that, that I mean, this is not necessarily to do with like Weimar and Brett and Verfremdung and performance and narration in a different way, but it does have a theoretical mm. root. He's allowing you to be a narrator and to have your own internal emotions. Yes. He doesn't think he can manipulate you into having an experience live and he can be the one with the power of the narrator. He's telling you, yeah, we're all telling a story together. You're my collaborator. Yeah. It just happens you're going to be in front of the camera. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but when I remember this scene now, yeah, I rem yeah. I, I, and um, this is this Robert Frank uh, photo of this uh, elevator girl, and all people are in the it's a big shopping mall or something uh, in, in New York, and all people are uh, consumers, but she's for this moment she's free. Yeah, she's on a, and he called this. Uh, uh, Robert Frank called this uh, uh, little elevator girl a uh, female pilot yeah? uh, because she's on the on, on, on a, she's on a flight by herself. Yeah? But I'm, t uh, I'm writing this down not for the the yeah. waitress. Yeah? I write it down that um, we have this feeling that uh, that the actors also have this feeling and the characters they are playing have this feeling that the world around them is rich. Yeah? And when I change the camera position. To 45 degrees to from from the main actress away, there's a new story, mm. yeah? and yes. this gives yeah. you a feeling of uh, to be in the world yeah? and not to be on an on a on a set and an editing table uh, uh, surrounded by producers and um, make a, make a um, digital movie where you can say yes or no, this is good, this is bad, because it's 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 rich and, and on, the, on the other hand, it's simple. It's rich and simple in the same moment. Yeah? Therefore, sometimes I write down, but do you remember yes, this? But it, yeah, hmm? It's so nice because you share your feelings and your, you share your images you had when, write, when, you write, when you wrote the script with us. And everybody knows and feels what you mean in that moment, even if I don't know this uh, Robert uh, Frank. Or, is that? Yeah, so, it's Robert uh, Frank guy, the photographer. Yeah. I'm a Robert Frank guy. Yeah. And it's, yeah, you, you want to share your image and you, you, he likes intelligent people. I don't want to say that I'm specially well, intelligent. No, no, we know no, what's no. going on here. I don't mean that. But <laughs> you want to have your actors on the same level as you are. You don't have any secrets. I, I remember very much uh, one scene, um, another actor who couldn't come to our reading weekend, you know? And he arrived for his, he had two or three scenes. He arrived and he said, oh yeah. So he wasn't part of our conspiracy yeah. family in a way. And he arrived and he said, oh, I had a hard night. Oh, last night I had a long shooting and I'm really oh, so tired and all that. Oh, okay, where are my lines? And he was okay because no? and you hated it to work with him of course you you are able to do it to say okay try it try it again try it you can shout or try it yeah, now imagine you are like this yeah give give him more voice or but you don't you don't like to work like yeah like a teacher or anything that's not yeah no, your I method it's not your <laughs> method in a way but it's also, I mean, you've got this background in the theatre and thinking about the theatre, but at the same time, there's a literary thing, or it, I don't mean literary in the sense of not cinema, but there's something going on about storytelling. I mean, one other thing I find is extraordinary is the realisation in transit, anyone who hasn't seen it, think about this when you see it, is that the, the, the narrator of the novel, which is, you know, I mean, it's not in English, it's only, I think, recently been translated, but it's a classic novel in, in Germany. It's a big big deal this novel and it's an extraordinary kind of beautiful contradictory melodramatic tale um, but the narrator is the Franz character who is uh, who is pretending to be a famous author um, and then in the hands of Christian Petzold there's a character who's referred to who's a barman because they always go to the same bar and that person becomes the narrator um, so you have this kind of sense 
you know, and it, uh, that you can move the narration around, you can find points of view, and that storytelling itself, I mean, you have films where people read out Huckleberry Finn, you're talking, you know, you spend every evening reading the grim uh, to people, so the, the notion of storytelling as a subject, in a way, is your subject. Yes, but this depends a little bit to this thing, when I read Transit the first time in my life, the novel, at the age of the 80s, 80s there was bubbles inside the, the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, the, and, and it was at the time when I uh, hate to read German literature, yeah, because uh, it was surrounded by Siegfried Lenz, Heinrich Böll, and it was boring literature for me. And uh, I have read just only Ang uh, American literature, mostly American literature, and Kipling, English, and so on. And uh, when Harun gave me the novel yeah, and said, this is great, a great novel. And I don't believe him because I, th I thought that Anna Seger is, it's, uh, it's, it's like Siegfried Lenz and Heinrich Böll and there's some, some romanticism. Yeah, romanticism and German expressionism and so. And when I read it, it was also uh, uh, the, the style and um, the, the, uh, the, the, the language of this uh, novel was also on transit between a European literature to an American literature. Yeah? It, there are so many American books with the, with the people in the first uh, person uh, speaking, yeah? because the Americans like, they don't, they, they like to, to have books uh, as if you are on a, in a bar and are talking to a bartender and you, take, uh, to, uh, you tell him your whole life and, or your marriage and your, 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 your depression and so on. And, um, and you want to, to, to um, they want to uh, impress the, the other side and to impress also us as when we are re uh, the, uh, the readers. Yeah? And this was very new, and, and so we have both things. We have the American literature in, in, in Anna Seger's from the land she wants to go to, yeah, the country she wants to go to, the USA, and also you have this fantastic German language she's coming from. Yeah? And uh, so I was totally impressed, and I have to find a, I find a solution for the, the, for the movie because I don't like voiceovers which, uh, where the, someone is saying I, the first person in a uh, movie in the voiceover is uh, mostly la uh, uh, they they are, uh, they betray the uh, uh, the audience yeah? like in the Fight Club or in uh, um, you know the uh, um, usual suspects yeah they 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 this bullshit for yeah they they they're cheating us and so I need I need this third person of uh, uh, of, of a bartender and so I changed this uh, um, novel by Anna Segers into an, an Totally American novel, yeah, I say. But it's very richly ironic in a way that that, that, that that discussion of story in a very, not very 19th century, it's very 18th century, it's very Heine, it's very, it's very complex about truth and lies in a way that really isn't there in other German filmmaking because it's all an obsession with direct story, yeah. unmediated storytelling without storytellers. Yeah, for, for me it's like, I love the, the USA because so many fantastic storytellers are coming to the USA. They have no storytellers of their own, they're coming from Europe, yeah? from Ireland, from England, from uh, Romania, from Germany, and they change their sets, but they bring with them fantastic, they bring the history to the USA. And this was uh, was an yeah. interesting thing, yeah, which I find in the novel. And I have to find for this transit novel, yeah, I have to find also a language yeah, in, in the voiceover. And I find it found it with a, with Matthias Brand and as as a barkeeper. And he's also because he's he's lying a little bit. Yeah, we, we you see picture in the picture you see a, a, a young man and a young girl and their their hands are very, uh, with their they're they're very tender to each other, but they don't kiss each other. Yeah? But he said they kiss, yeah? and so this his his own desire is also in his voice and not uh, and yep, so he's also just not uh, he's. A, He's also someone. He's a human being with with desire and wishes, yeah? and so he's he's, he's not uh, he's not cheating the audience. He's he's uh, he's wishing something. So he's getting also a, a character. Yeah? Now I'm thinking about how evocative he will be on set in German in his own language about things like this. Um, um, so I want to just say something about music in your work quickly 
but we'll do the clip first and then we'll get that out of the way. Again, I'm sorry that I'm showing end things, but then, you know, everybody has to see this movie. Uh, it's compulsory, so it doesn't matter. And actually, it is the reveal of the whole story in the end. So it's an incredible uh, commitment to melodramatic technique in storytelling in lots of your work. And this is a great example, and it's from Phoenix. There's something big going on about music. But it's also about the idea that um, you have characters who have cultural experiences, which a lot of films don't have. The directors have cultural experiences, or they remember songs, or they've read a book. But your characters have actually also been in the world, um, in, the, in a representa re represented world, which is a very stark thing. I mean, I know it sounds ordinary, but it's very particular to to what you do. I, I, there's another film, and maybe it is Piloton, where there's a wonderful scene where, the, it's, as usual in an early Petzl, they're in an open top car driving away from something with some money in the back. And then, and then she, she says, oh, I've got to put on my favorite CD. And it becomes the soundtrack for his collapse uh, and death, and it's the end. Um, <coughs> so <clears throat> could you just talk about music and how you think about film music? Because I think a lot of your music is not conventionally always underscore or, uh, or played in the space. Yes, um, um, there are also some movies completely without music, yeah, without sound. And uh, I received some time, some years ago, an award for, the, for example, for the movie Wolfsburg in uh, Grimme Institute in Mal. And on this, uh, there was Klaus Doldinger, a German jazz uh, composer and um, performer who win the prize for Das Boot and, and Tatort. Yeah? It's a very popular uh, um, film and also a TV series. And he's really, he has a big band, music, yeah, saxophone playing, very hard, sweaty. Yeah? And, uh, and then I w uh, won the prize for directing or something like that. And, um, and, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was what it, your prize was for. No, it, 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 yeah, there are some, sometimes they have a prize for the collective work, and so I don't know if it produces, and I don't know, but I think it's always for directing. I think so. Uh, not script writing, it's kind of directing. And, uh, and um, we see then some scenes, and the, um, the guy who, who was a conferencier said, this is a film without music. And uh, so um, Klaus Dordinger came to me and said he had seen this film, uh, he he loves the music in the film. Yeah? It, was not, it, was, it was really good what he's, we are talking very good because I don't like his music, yeah? but it was a good sentence uh, what he told me. For me, it's m music, it's always when I'm writing, it's always during our work, we are talking the whole time about music, but because I think, for example, melodrama, dramatic, uh, melodrama means uh, a drama with music. Yeah, that's uh, because it's coming from the, comes from the uh, time when, when there was no sound in the movies, yeah, and so they used uh, music, and, but this music doesn't, um, it's not like ketchup on hamburger, yeah, and, and the mostly hot today, the music uh, creates uh, reactions, and that, this I don't want, I want that the, the actors uh, can hear the same music, yeah? sometimes the, the music is, uh, is what, what's the word, not extra diegetisch, Extra digate, uh, yeah, underscoring, yeah, yeah. Un non diegetic, yeah. yeah. So, and the other hand is sometimes the composer Stefan Will is writing a score because I love scores too, yeah? and sometimes I don't use them because I love scores, yeah. And, um, and, and he's writing a score, and then the, 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 the actors can hear the score in the scenes where later in the movie the score will be, yeah, uh, because. It's so when someone is walking through the streets, or he's uh, he's uh, what what you what Bela Balash called a passage. Yeah? When when an actor, uh, we see him just from the behind, but he's going for 10, 20 seconds, in, in, like Charlie Chaplin in the Direction Horizon. Yeah? And the, the, he has music in his mind, yeah? a, a, a little tune, something. He's in a mood. Yeah? And I think the actor has has to hear the music, so. His walking has something to do with the dance for himself, yeah? and not. And uh, I don't want to be later in, 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 in the, in the, on the editing table and use some some music. But, oh, this is great. We can use here uh, stylistics or something, yeah? some bands or so. So I want to have this music on on the set. Yeah? 
Um, there's, a, there's an enigma because, I mean, um, <clears throat> you're doing things which, which where we feel, I, I've, a lot of the work is, especially when you get to the third act of one of your stories, there's a lot of really uh, plangent emotional tones coming. I find it very moving in a lot of ways. I mean, transit in, in a way more than any. And, uh, and, and you use the word melodrama. What do you, how do you respond to people who use the word melodrama as a, as a derogatory word or as a word which refers to fantasy as opposed to reality? What do you, how do you deal with that? Because, I mean, it's the problem that, you know, 25 years ago, Fassbinder was fighting that, and now yeah. it, the whole thing of taking melodrama seriously has a whole... Yes, this is, I, I think it's right. Uh, the, mm, Doug and Cirque, uh, we have, we have yeah. seen together uh, during, we have made... The screen uh, Cirque movies together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, seen Imitation of Life together and start crying, Matthias, you and me, yeah? but during we are shooting Wolves, yeah? This was up during Wolves, yeah? And uh, it, this was filled up with music. Yeah? And uh, you know that Douglas Sirk, uh, Detlef Sirk, is a German from, the, from Berlin. Yeah? In, in the 20s, he had made movies, and in the 30s, he too. He made Zara Leander musicals as well. He made quite a few musical yeah. films. Yeah. So, so for his, his, his score room is filled as like an orchestra. Yeah? But I like it. It's, yeah? so, and when Fassbinder, he, he was uh, the son of Douglas Sirk, I want to say. Yeah? Uh, Fassbinder uses the, also music like him, but, uh, uh, but like that, uh, Dr. Sirk, but he used it in the, in the ju jukebox in a bar. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's not coming from an orchestra from in, in the, uh, under the stage. Yeah? He's, he's coming from the, from the jukebox or from the radio where people are singing it. Yeah? Yeah. And this was a, a, a modern melodrama. And for me, I think I also make melodramas. I think so. Yeah? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, and, I think so. Yeah, I think and hope so. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> And uh, for me, I have, we are now 2018, and I have another, another um, I think I have to renew uh, the, the music for myself. I can't use the Fassbinder jukebox and the gender things, he, he's, yeah. he, uh, and, the, and the mask grid and the, uh, and the transgender things. I, I can't use it like him. I have to find uh, my own music. But what's interesting about transit as an idea is that you're taking a book which is, in some ways, if you were if you're being if you're being an anti-melodramatic person, which a lot of people are in a kind of instinctual way, they would say it's got a lot of dramatic irony that goes for a long time. We know that that's probably who who he who he's pretending to be, but she doesn't, and so on. Uh, or you know that 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 there are a lot of mirrorings and coincidences. Um, and those things, but that's what makes it so powerfully uh, expressive. Um, this, there's this thing which people say, which is the Berliner Schule, but then when they talk about the other filmmakers, I mean, you know, I know that you're all great friends, and I know that you're all really in Berlin, somewhere from Munich, but in a way that, that there's a dividing line there somewhere, because that there's such a, the way people talk about a lot of those films is about this uh, intense, unmediated presence as, as the key technique. You know, here, it's, it's out of Chantal Ackerman or whatever, but it's here we are, we're, we're, we're there and we're watching something and nobody's getting in our way. What you're doing is something which is related to melodrama, to B-movies, to Hitchcock. It's manipulative and yet it's creating a total meaning. So what, what happens when people say, oh, Christian, you're part of the Berliner Schule, what do you say to them? You say, well, okay, I live there, or what? <laughs> the distributor is my friend, and he said, never talk again about Berliner Schule. I, okay, I hate it, but I have to do it now. <laughs> and um, for, for me, it was, it was we had, I think there were three, four, five movies at the beginning of the sen of this century. Yeah? Uh, and they called them Berliner Schule. They, they were totally different, but they are, but they're based on a discussion between yeah, people yeah. who have left the German, Democra uh, German Democratic Republic, not the German Film Academy, it's not the DDR. <laughs> yes. It's absolutely no connection between yeah. the two. It was the a way. high wall we have to. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And we, we talked, but we are, we are totally different. But uh, one of the journalists said, now we can see people walking through streets. Long, long, what uh, heißt nochmal Einstellung? Das habe ich alles Long shot. And, and nicht long shot, ist ja Tele. Das heißt nur, das heißt nur long, lange. Takes? Uh, long takes, okay. This one. Yeah, long takes. So the winner takes it all. And uh, long takes. <laughs> and um, so, and so, and, I think we have not such a really, really intelligent film critic uh, um, culture here in Germany, yeah? because they don't earn so much money. And uh, you know, in the effort set, there is no. Uh, it's very generous. You say they're underpaid, and that's why they don't understand. Yeah, but but nobody's interested. It. We have in the effort set and the Süddeutsche Zeitung, we have uh, two, two, three pages about theater and opera, and so so less about movie. Uh, that this is really ridiculous, and they're so. So they don't see the movies really, and they say everything the same to each movie from Berliner Schule. Long takes, yeah? and uh, no music, and uh, uh, it's a little bit boring, and, but the, the foreign countries like France, they like it, but you know they are crazy, the econo economy is not so good as the German economy. It's, it's like, like this a little bit. Yeah? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, we, yeah. are, we are totally different. Maren made a, a, a really fantastic comedy. Yeah? Ulrich now has made, uh, Ulrich Köhler made a dystopia movie. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, I make a melodrama, but long yeah. takes. Well, uh, yeah. No, 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 it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm just criticizing the category, not you. So um, uh, um, that's good. I want to show the last clip, and then I want to just sum up a tiny bit about one of my questions, and then I'm going to throw it open to all of you and so that you can take part, because... Um, but can we, can we show the last clip? It's another clip from Transit. Uh, this was a long take. <laughs> yeah, it's a totally wonderful scene and great script, isn't it? Incredible. Um, even with that, if you haven't seen the film, uh, if, you, if, you, if you haven't seen it. Now, I have to say one thing which is, was a bit difficult, but um, Barbara's put up with it, which is that, that, that she, she has uh, a really important secondary character uh, who is a character who's stuck also in transit in this place uh, and has these two dogs that she's been left and she turns up here and there and kind of she has her own beginning, middle and end and, 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 and she's very troubled but very, it's very enigmatic what she's doing but the three clips that we've got, the standard distribution clips, you're not in them. Um, but I, I want to ask you um, uh, a bit more about being in this situation because you now you're coming up for number five or number six of the pet salts. Now, so when you've got a character who in a way is unknown to themselves, I mean, in other words, there's an identity um, uh, that you're searching for. His, his characters, in a way, they say, well, those are your papers. That's where you're from. This is where you're running. What can you do? You know, so there's a kind of, there's this kind of simplicity about that. And then you're going to create some kind of way of playing it, some emotional center. Um, could you talk about, because maybe those characters that you've played for him have got something in common. Can you talk about what your preparation is like when you're working on, on a, a, in a part like that? Because it's almost like being in a very generic film in a certain way. You mean my preparation for this uh, role yeah, here, for, for the role. architect yeah. I played? Um, of course, I read the novel. Transit, and I read um, of Valerian Frey. Frey. Mm -hmm. He was an American young, yeah, he was 30 years old or 31, and he was sent from the States to rescue some people because um, in the States they, um, there was a, a picture in the newspaper of Leon Feuchtwanger in the camp near, nearby of, uh, of Marseille. And suddenly they thought, oh God, what happens there in Europe? We have to rescue some people. And so I, I read this book, for example, this report of Valerian Frey and um, the others. And um, yeah, I, I was looking because of course it's, a diff it's difficult to, I have just some scenes and I have to transport the whole life of this person, of course, in such a supporting part. Yeah. And so you, you need to know all about her as a main character too, but you can't show all. So you have to 
yeah, to show it in your face because you can't talk about this, about your story. And I was, for example, I was really afraid of the moment she commits suicide because I wasn't he, going to mention that, but yeah. Yeah, of course, no, no, <laughs> no, because he doesn't show it. And I read in the script, of course, it's the moment Georg is uh, lightening his cig uh, cigarette and suddenly she disappeared. It's an okay, incredibly it's, it's very piece easy for, yeah. uh, it's for me. Uh, you can't see it, how jumping. Uh, yeah. So I said, oh, one problem less. Nice. But what's going on before? I mean, what, and I said to him, I'm, I'm afraid of this scene. Even if we don't, if, even if I don't have to show how it is, but, and of course it's clear that the decision is before she wants to commit suicide. What's going, what, what she thinks about, what, she, what does she feel in that moment, what she's talking about. And of course I thought, ah, probably she's thinking about her family, about the, the life she lost, and uh, perhaps, um, yeah, the, the family, perhaps, yeah, all this. And then, then suddenly he said, no, I give you some pages about architecture, about the museum. The museum is the great museum. Um, it's opened in 2013 in Marseille at the harbour side. It's the Black Cubus and it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And um, he said, I give you some architectural things and read it about Ricciotti, the architect. And uh, perhaps you can, you can create your own um, speech, the little speech before you're jumping and you are talking about the, the thing you most love in your life, the architectural things. And not what you lost, but the, the passion things. And so, um, yeah, and that was great. I went to the museum, of course. I spent half a, half a day there, and I enjoyed this light. And it's like a lace, like a black lace from stone round, and that you're sitting on the roof terrace. Uh, the people are sitting there and enjoy the light breaking through the little holes. And that, and suddenly I, I, suddenly I knew how to play and what I, what I should feel in that moment. And that was something like great, like small experiences. It's, it's a wonderful story, actually. And that's a great story because it, it's, it, it's exactly what you said, that you, you're, you're an active creative collaborator and he's sending you in a place where your thoughts are going to... We talked, I think, four days uh, before we met here now, we talk about this scene together. Yeah. Yeah? And, yeah. and during our shooting, I can't explain it like you do it. Yeah? It's not so that I have it in my head uh, what, what is a man or a woman who will commit suicide will think in her last three, four hours. Yeah? This, uh, this I can't do. But in, in, uh, in, in our conversation we have, we expected something we both didn't, didn't know before, yeah? that you when you when you uh, when you when you want to make commit suicide, you are by your own. Yeah, it's a party with your own life. Yeah, you said to the world, "Fuck me." Yeah, uh, it's it's my life. Yeah, and this is the thing I want. Uh, this is my passion. This is the thing I love. This is beauty. Beauty. Yeah, and then I can go. Yeah? I can go as a self. Uh, uh, with self-confidence, yeah? And I can go as the... Uh, the uh, she's, she gets her identity back yeah. by this, in a way. Because uh, the people there were no really individuals anymore. They were... They didn't exist because they lost all the past, their home, all that. They had no future, so they were nobody. Yeah? Yeah. That's, so yeah. it's also very good for the, for the character of Franz Rogowski, Georg because they are very young, Paula Bear and mm. Franz Rogowski. They don't know so much from life. Yeah? And they are surrounded by people who have, who, who have wounds. Too much already. Yeah, and so they learn. It's a, it's a development story. And they, he learned from you yeah? and this for, for, the, for his life and also for the story. Yeah? I must say also that... But me, I learn from him also. It's both, <laughs> yeah, from, from the youth too. Yeah. And Franz is an actor who... Uh, film acting is to, to watch 
at each other, really to look, really to look in the in his eyes. And if you look in Franz's eyes, you you it's so deep. There's some yeah, it's it's uh, great. I should open it out because we haven't got that many minutes. Because you probably there's always people at what an important question that they wanted an hour ago to be asked, and then they need to get those questions out. Has somebody got the, the roving microphone? Have we got one in here? Up there? There's a question here. It's a gentleman in the second row has got a question. Oh yeah, this is, you have to throw the box to the next person. Um, yes, uh, first of all, thank you for this great opportunity. It's uh, fascinating for me listening to you guys talk about all these um, things. Uh, I would like to ask a two-fold question uh, about your DVD versions, please. Um, DVD versions <laughs> of your movies. First of all, um, Cuba Libre, I've never seen it. Do you have any advice, even if you don't like it that much anymore, on how <laughs> I can watch it and maybe enjoy it more? It's a problem. The first three movies I made, uh, films I made, are, uh, TV, uh, are made for TV. And when you're in Germany, you make something for TV, you can use music. We talked about music, and I use some songs. Yeah? I, I used one song by Roy Orbison. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a very yeah. important song. It's not a score song there. It's, uh, it's in, the, in the picture. Yeah? And Roy Orbison died, and this year we made this movie. And it's also the time where, um, where um, all the musicians, composers, are not so more interested in... Uh, to give something to, to the movies because CDs and so nobody's buying them. Yeah? So they have agencies and lawyers who want to earn much money yeah? uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the rights. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually we'll get it, yeah. but you have to talk to somebody from uh, yeah. um, ZDF or whatever. No, it's not also not CDF. We, have, we haven't got the possibility to make a DVD because the American uh, agency of Roy Orison and, and yeah. Yeah, wants to have uh, $59,000. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, this is, uh, so you can't earn $59,000 with a, with a DVD by a Berlin school <laughs> director. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, the second uh, part of my question is on uh, audio commentaries. Several of your DVDs feature audio commentaries, and I enjoy them vastly, to be honest with you. But uh, your most current releases don't feature audio commentaries. Is this a conscious decision by you? Don't you like doing them? Or is there any... Are they too expensive again? I love to make the audio comment commentary. I like, uh, the first I made in my life for the DVD of uh, um, um, the State I'm in, in der Sicherheit, was together with Barbara. And it was a great afternoon, I remember. We are sitting in a, in a little studio, we saw the movie, and it was like uh, we remembered uh, our work. And uh, it was really great. I like it. Uh, like it. But I, I have to ask the distributor, I think. Uh, I don't know why. I, I love it. I, uh, when, when he invites me to make an audio commentary, I'm, I'm there. I, I, can talk. I like to talk, I must say. Yeah. In, in German. Thank you very much. In German. Yes, there's a question up there at the back. Okay. Or was there somebody else first? No, the, that's fine. Just I have keep the cube, it. So I Go keep for it. it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I was wondering if you could. It's kind of like an open question, and I was wondering if you could talk a bit about uh, your collaborations with Harun Farhoki. Oh, yes. Because um, I personally have also worked with uh, writing a script together with somebody else, and it's a very interesting process, and it's very, it demands a lot of energy and some kind of a structure, how you work and how you interact with the other person, especially if you yourself are the director and you're thinking like, four stages ahead as well at the same time. So how did you develop this ever-returning structure and this, 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 this gymnastics uh, in a way with him? And yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, we, we have worked, I think, I think, for 25 years together. And, uh, and in this 25 years, we have we have, a, we have found a rhythm, I must say. The rhythm was like this. We walked we walk together through Berlin 
and uh, look at architecture and houses because he loved this. He loved this very much, and I learned so much about Berlin and architecture, architecture about this. And we have some, some places we. <laughs> <laughs> The le no, no, not good. And, um, the, um, the, we have some places, some benches. I don't do anything. Yeah, no, it's, I'm back, uh, back, on. and um, and then it's always the same. I have a story. I'm the storyteller. And I tell him a story. It's like 10 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes. Sometimes I know after two minutes I stop the story because he's sitting there. The reaction was, "This is nothing." So, but sometimes he he said, uh, "Okay, uh, I think we can work about this." And then I have, I have I write down the story as a, a short story, and then we start working in his kitchen. Yeah, it was uh, like a kitchen in this Kafka paintings uh, uh, on the books and for, as Fisher. Uh, and, and there's a little, he has a really, really big kitchen, but a very small table in the corner. And we are sitting at a small table, like on a very modern stage, yeah? but there was no audience. And uh, we, are, uh, we are writing their uh, dialogues together. And he is a fantastic dialogue. Uh, 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 he, he, he has a rhythm for dialogues. He, and he hates, he hates uh, so many things. I learned so much uh, about, about writing dialogues with, uh, together with him. I'm the storyteller and he's the dialogue uh, coach, I must say, in this time. And then I go home by a bicycle. And have to, uh, he said, "No, we have to work. I work three, three, four days alone in uh, in front of my computer or typewriter in the in the 90s." And uh, then I then I send it to him to him, and then I'm back in the kitchen at the end of the week, and so the, all the whole thing starts again and again. And uh, this was a fantastic mm. uh, work because we never write, we never had written together. It's just one is telling a story, and the other is writing. Yeah? And then we, uh, well, there, well, there was this little divorce, and then we came back, yeah? and with, with fresh air and fresh energy. Yeah. Often I have then, after we have uh, uh, written in his kitchen, I, we have to go into his laboratorium where he's uh, editing the documentaries, you know? and I have to see a documentary. You have to work on that, you have to uh, contribute uh, to that yeah, job. You know, and uh, I like this too very much, and, and I feel always a little bit like I'm going into a church because there are so many videos and monitors, and he was like a, like a mad scientist there. Yeah. But he had an incredible analytical mind about whether you were seeing something or not, and what it was you were saying in a way, in, ev in everything. Yeah, that's right. So in a sense, if you say, this scene's gonna do these four things, He's not going to miss any of them out, right? Yeah, that's right. He's also the master of uh, uh, ellipse, ellipse. Yeah, he hate. He said the cinema is also some, something out of the cataract. Yeah? Also, I, his idea was in Wolfsburg that the wedding journey of uh, Benno Fuhrmann and his wife to Cuba. Yeah? I've written really fantastic Cuba scenes because I thought a little bit to make three, four days in Cuba, I think. Yeah? <laughs> and and uh, he said, who's interested in this wedding journey? Yeah? They, you, you, you show, we can show them at the, at the airport, yeah? and then we show Nina Host, the mother, and then the others come back. And they come back in the car, yeah? and they are it's a cabriolet, and they are they are full of with the son of Cuba, and they have pictures, yeah? and they are crossing the, this cross yeah? on the street where the the, uh, the boy died. Yeah? This is a scene, and not this three four days in Cuba. This is uh, this is German television prime time. Yeah? And so uh, this was, I like this. I, I have so many of these moments together with him. And you, you can hear his voice while you're working now saying, oh, look, Christian, I don't think maybe you don't need to do that or. Yeah, I start to, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm not esoteric and I'm not a, a, a real sentimental guy, but uh, sometimes I, I am. Yeah? I'm esoteric, I never, I'm never esoteric, but I, for this idea to, to, to change the, 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 the time of Anna Seger's story into the presence yeah, uh, in, our, in, our, in our time. There I went to his uh, grave, it's, it's a Dorothee uh, Friedhof here, and uh, there is also Anna Seger on this, on this uh, graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, 
together. Together and uh, Hegel yeah? and uh, all, all people uh, you, you need for your life. Uh, Very lying informative there. graveyard. So, yeah. And I go to this and, and, uh, and it's not... We both lo lo loved the movie by John Ford, Young Mr. Lincoln. There's the, the scene where the young Mr. Lincoln is going to the grave of his mother or, or his yeah. wife. His wife is not the mother. And he has this, this little stick and said, shall I go to Washington or shall I stay as a lawyer here in this uh, little town? Yeah? And he, he, uh, and when, when it's on the right side, I go to Washington. Life left side is stay as a lawyer in this little town. And so he there was made the decision for law, uh, Washington and he said, oh, give the stick a little push. Yeah? And uh, so I think it was a little bit like this. Uh, it was a, a not so sad uh, visit at, at his graveyard, but I uh, asked him there for this decision. Thank you. Uh, yes. We have to throw you the microphone. You have to throw it all the way to the back. Go on. Oh, yeah, almost. Um. Um, how did you come up uh, with that, I guess, uh, wonderful idea to use uh, Hans-Dieter Hüsch's song in your uh, film? Um, there are two songs by Hans-Dieter Hüsch, and when we are both, uh, when we are three are together at, uh, um, for, during the, um, the shooting of Wolves yeah, in, in, Bayer, in Bavaria, we heard these two songs, and we all three start crying, I must say. Yeah? Uh, the, this Abendlied by Hansi der Hüsch is one of my favorite songs. I'm, I'm from Düsseldorf, yeah? and, and Hansi der Hüsch lived uh, 30 kilometers away from me. And it was in the end of the 70s, and I was surrounded by K groups. Uh, uh, I was also a member of communist groups. Yeah? And um, for me, Hans, the experience with Hansi der Hüsch was a very important experience because I find found back to humanity, human, humanity, 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 I must say. Because, uh, sure there was, I saw, I think, 10 or 12 concerts he made. He's one of uh, my uh, all-time favorites. Yeah? And uh, the song Abendlied is the, also the, 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 the lullaby for my children. And it's, one of, it's, a really, it's a really great song, I must say. It's really great. I think Bloomfeld has also made a cover version. It's also I like very much because in their cover version they don't use any guitar, so they just also use the the organ, not the fantastic organ by Hansi der Hüsch, yeah, which is very, Hansi der Hüsch is a little bit a church music, a little, yeah, but um, but Bloomfeld make their reminiscence to this version. Thanks. Any more? Any more? There's one yeah, there. Can you go all the way back again? Oh. It is quite heavy in the mic. Um, I was lucky to have um, the chance to, um, to watch um, Harun Farouki's only um, a traditional um, narrative um, film, um, Beton, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I had to think directly to Yela. So I want to ask, um, was there any kind of connection between the two? He, he uh, hated Betrogen very much, you know. He, 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 he has hidden the, this movie. We, I have the possibility, it was, I think, we are not friends at this time, 1988 or 89, he showed this movie in the German Film Academy, yeah, once in a very bad copy, and he, uh, he said, I don't like it, I don't see it, we don't discuss it, and so he, he don't like it, because it, it, uh, in this time, um, he wants to make this, this great movie. Yeah? And he, go, he went to Hof, at this festival yeah? uh, near Munich, yeah? uh, and he said uh, Hof just exists because the people from uh, Munich are so coward yeah? that they don't, uh, uh, because they, don't, they want to go to Berlin, but they're cowards, and so they have made a festival in Hof yeah? on the way to Berlin. And, uh, and in, in this festival, there, was, uh, there were two movies yeah? uh, uh, in the focus. One is Doris Dörrie, Männer. Uh, and the other was Harun Farouki Betrogen. And the whole, the whole journalism, this fantastic German film critic journalism, yeah, said uh, um, manner is the new thing, yeah, and uh, uh, Betrogen is old, old 70 left-wing Berlin shit stuff. Yeah? And this is, so he was totally, I think, totally disappointed and re reinvented himself with the documentaries, but it's, it's a scar, I must say. And he always said to me, because the, the script is great, 
but uh, and and and, have, and I think the film is also very very good. Yeah? Um, but uh, he always said to me, we, "Let's do the Betrogen again together." You you are directing it, and I rewrite it. But I don't want to do that because I want to be someone of my of my own. But uh, we are always laughing about that. Yes? And every time we start a new project, he uh, said, "Let's try uh, what what's about betrayed again," yeah? and we start laughing about this. Okay, uh, one quick question, but we must stop soon. Yes. Okay, quick question. Um, one of the things I really like about your films are the female characters, and they're quite enigmatic in the choices they make. In Barbara, I would say three reasons why she actually stays in the GDR. Women in the West don't need to work. She wants to help the girl from the Jugendwerkhof, and she's fallen in love. Love always plays a part. But in Transit, which I've only seen once, for me, the, the choice, the, is it Marie the protagonist makes, is very ambivalent. She leaves her husband in Paris with the doctor. Then she doesn't go on the boat because she waits for her husband. So I'm, I'm, I'm really puzzled about her very conflicting moves and what it all leads to. Uh, can you comment on that? Yes. This is a really good. This is English from England, yeah. It's not American. No, it's it's English from England, but I'm a German native. Hey, ah, you're German native. <laughs> I, I want to talk like you. Yes, this is ambivalent. That you're totally right. But I think uh, Paula Bear had, had, had said it by herself. The the actress by herself. She was a muse of a writer. Yeah, she's 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 not adult. She's just a muse. She's young, yeah? and the adult, the the writer is lying on the bed. Yeah? As she's lying on the bed, and he's writing, drinking red wine, and, and, and her body's going through the apartment, and he can he could write something, and, and yeah. So he's like a father, and yeah? and, and and an artist, and he's not Dieter Wedel, but he's something like that in this <laughs> marriage. Yeah? So, and and then she. Uh, but she knows in this moment when the Germans are coming, she knows this guy couldn't uh, save her life. Yeah? So she's going to someone who has a car, yeah? uh, he, who is a doctor who can work with his hands, who has skill. Yeah? She's, this is a surviving a moment in her life. She's going to the car. Yeah? Then she's going on, onto the ship. And in this moment, yeah, on, when she's going onto the ship, she, she feels the first time in her life uh, the, the, the feeling of guilty. Yeah? And this is the first step in her life to getting a doubt. Not love, not passion, to feel guilty. Yeah? And this was, and, and how, how she's te telling us her, this kind of character, I understand everything from her. Thank you very much. Um, well, I, I, I don't know about you, but I thought this, uh, it, it, we got some really interesting detail. I, I want to say something after four, four days of watching Christian's films again, I remembered the one sh very short haiku of Brett that I, that I always loved, which is the one that says, I didn't like being where I was. I'm not sure I want to go where I'm going. Why do I watch them change the wheel in this nervous way? Um, and there's this notion that we're all, we've got this partial identity, we're stuck in this place. We don't want to look back or forward but somehow we've got to do something, which in a way is normally very generic, and in your work it's very spiritual all the way through, and um, it was just wonderful to see everything again. We couldn't represent all of that in the clips, but then apart from Cuba Libre, unfortunately, everything else is out there. So um, I just want to thank um, Barbara and, and Christian on your behalf very much for um, showing us what they, what they do. Thank you. <laughs>